Welcome. I want to give an independent short proof of this folklore theorem that if we have a planar graph then the operosity is smaller or equal to 3. So it's a theorem which you actually can find in the literature. The first reference which I can find is uh, Algol Alon from 1989 who it is an exercise in Bondi Morti and uh, it has appeared also in the Matroid literature. But uh, everybody seems to kind of assume this is trivial and <laughs> according to Richard Feynman, right, a, a theorem is either proven and it's trivial or it's not proven. And about folklore, I found a nice definition on the web. Someone sketched it on the back of an envelope mimeographed it and showed it to three people in a seminar in Chicago in 1973, except that the only evidence that we have of these events is a comment that was overheard in another seminar at Columbia of 1976. Nevertheless, if some younger person is so presumptuous as to write down a proper proof and attempts to publish it, they will get shot down in flames. So this is kind of something like that. Algol Alon, they uh, have an inequality here, which is says the number of edges in a planar graph is smaller or equal than 3 times the number of vertices minus 6, which uh, obviously is wrong if you look at K2, which is a planar graph. You can draw it in a, in a, uh, on the plane. Right? If you look at that, E is equal to 1, V is equal to 2, this fails. So it, there is kind of some uh, things we have to look at. It's nevertheless, it's not difficult. It's not a very deep result like the four color theorem. This is definitely a deep result as far as we know. The only kind of proof which is uh, established is the uh, uh, computer assisted proof going through many many different examples. So now here I have a couple of definitions, uh, graph theoretical definitions which lead to surfaces. So a surface is a graph such that every unit sphere is a circular graph with four or more elements and then you can kind of have the usual classification of surfaces but everything is finite we never ever look at the continuum here so these are all notions which are combinatorial and uh, very important is of course the Euler characteristic which determines many things for example Euler characteristic equal to 2 determines that we have a 2 sphere, Euler characteristic 1 determines that we have a projective plane, Euler characteristic 0 we have either a torus in the uh, orientable case or we have a, a Klein bottle which is in the non-orientable case. But so we can study these uh, uh, numbers, you know, the chromatic number and the operosity in any of the of surfaces and it's mostly mostly unexplored. So the only thing which we really understand well is the sphere. Uh, I actually kind of got to this, I proved that the, the acyclic uh, chromatic number is 4, also for a sphere, based on the 4 color theorem. It's an upgrade of the 4 color theorem. It's really nice to have a, a short proof which doesn't need the 4 color theorem. And here is kind of a an attempt to give you a just completely uh, independent and uh, complete proof of this. Also solving that riddle here. We have to read this uh, properly. <clears throat> we want to prove that every planar graph has operosity as small or equal to 3. So a tree has operosity 1, a circle has op which is planar has operosity 2, and in general a uh, planar graph has operosity 3. And actually for a two sphere, uh, every kind of we have a triangulation of a two-dimensional sphere, then it's always three. That's the three tree theorem which I've talked about a lot. But here we, we look at planar graphs, and uh, so there is a first of all a reduction which is well known according to Stromquist. Everybody who has ever worked on the four color theorem uh, has discovered that it doesn't really matter whether you look at four connected graphs or not. Four connected graphs are you, graphs which you cannot rip apart by taking three vertices away. And so that's kind of for here also for arboricity you can assume this because if you have two graphs which are four connected and you put them together you can take a tree on one side, a tree on the other side and build a tree in the entire thing. So without 
a loss of generality, we can assume that the graph is four connected. Kidney proved uh, once that if you have a, a four connected and maximal maximal planar graph, then it has to be a two sphere. And uh, also, what is obvious both for the cr uh, chromatic number and the arboricity, so the arboricity of a subgraph is smaller or equal than the arboricity of the entire graph because you can just if you take edges away, you, you take edges away of a, of a tree, or of a, then you get a forest. Or take edges away from a forest, you get still a forest. So this is, uh, this is reduces to prove the result for, uh, for two spheres. Ash Williams kind of looks at this function of the number of edges divided by the number of vertices minus one, which is one for trees. And then kind of, if you kind of count, you know, uh, if you take subgraphs and you look how many how big this ratio is, then you can uh, see the arboricity. So the uh, Nash Williams theorem tells you that this, uh, uh, the maximum over all these uh, functionals over subgraphs gives you the, uh, uh, determines the arboricity. Related is the average vertex degree, which kind of tells that arboricity is kind of like a, you know, like a, uh, average vertex degree and density notion. And what is very important and crucial is for two spheres that if you have, uh, if you know the area, which you, if you know the number of triangles which you have, then this determines everything. The number of triangles determines the number of vertices and the number of edges and the reason is that we have two equations, right? One equation is the Euler characteristic which is two and the second is the dane somerville relation, which holds only for two spheres, not for planar graphs, but three times the number of faces is two times the number of edges, right? because every edge is attached to two triangles and every triangle is, has, uh, is attached to three. From these two equations, we can just you know, get immediately a formula for B, which is two plus F half, and the formula for E, which is essentially just this thing, sum of it. And so all these three numbers, number of vertices, number of edges, number of faces, is determined if we know the number of faces, which is the area. That's pretty cool. And then uh, let's shoot now for this uh, Algol, I call this Algol Alon lemma, even so that's just a, you know, stated without the proof in that paper of 1989, it's just too obvious. By the way, there's quite a bit of literature, also other papers, just to refer to that without proof, without reference. So it's a typical folklore uh, theory. So let's just go about this. We want to actually prove this relation between edges and vertices, and uh, uh, which is obviously false if, if the graph is too small. But this holds if the number of vertices is bigger or equal to six. So that's what we want to show. And actually kind of for small graph, smaller than five, you can just, you know, by hand check that the arboricity is smaller than three. You, you start with, with, uh, with graphs which have, which have at least six vertices. So uh, let's see why this is true. So first of all, the first step is to prove this inequality here for two spheres. Now that's kind of pretty, easy because we have uh, formulas both for the vertices and both for the edges and then we just see simplify that it's something four is smaller or equal to f so the number of faces has to be bigger or equal to four and that's true for two-dimensional spheres it's not true here for example right because we have no four faces every two-dimensional sphere we have this relation and uh, just to look what happens when we have this relation, we can immediately get the, that the nash williams ratio is smaller than three. But that's for the whole graph. This is the number of edges, number of vertices of the whole graph, not of subgraphs. For the nash williams theorem, we have to prove it for every subgraph. The next step is to prove it for planar four connected graphs. So uh, that's kind of the, the, the picture, and that's the computation here. If you assume it's true for a, a four connected graph here, four connected graph here, and you glue them together with one, two, three, or you know, a cut set with one, two, three uh, uh, vertices, then you have also the 
uh, relation in general. The, and then for planar graphs, once you have it in general, then it's also true for planar graphs, as long as you keep B the same. Right? If you take a subgraph where you just delete some edges, so we have to keep these vertices, otherwise this inequality is not true. This inequality doesn't hold, say, for a, you know, this graph here. So what we have to do in order to really kind of make this really completely, you know, tight, we have to also show it for every for very, very small graphs, right? and then have then that this ratio, this Nash-Williams ratio is smaller than three. Smaller than three means then, then by the Nash-Williams theorem that the obesity of the graph is smaller than equal to three. So, uh, maybe I try to write this down uh, in an independent way, but it's just not totally obvious, and that's it for today. <clears throat>